Good morning and welcome to our fourth week in Easter as we join together and begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Opening hymn for this morning on this Good Shepherd Sunday is uh, Jesus Shepherd of the Sheep. As we begin this morning for worship, the uh, scriptures constantly remind us that many times, as Isaiah in the fifth, chapter 53 reminds us, we've gone our own way and done what we wanted to do in opposition to what God has commanded us to do and commanded us not to do. And because of that, as we gather together today, we join together now in confessing our sins according to the hymn, um, Jesus uh, sinners does receive. God, our Heavenly Father, in his great mercy and love, anointed Jesus to be the all-atoning sacrifice for all of our sins. Every time we have strayed from his word and from his holy law. Therefore, upon this your confession, I declare to you the forgiveness, the forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the hymn verse. Let us now join our hearts together in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you lovingly laid down your life for us, the wandering sheep. We thank you that you have returned us to your fold, forgiven us all of our sins, and that you promised to continue to lead us even to your heavenly home, paradise. Help us to trust that you are always there with your love and care that you defend us from every danger around us and from the dangers we also can get ourselves into. 
We thank you for all these things. And in your holy name we pray, you who live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. On this Good Shepherd Sunday, uh, our Old Testament lesson for today is taken from that very familiar psalm, Psalm 23, which speak of, speaks of how God is so good to us and how he does take care of us as a shepherd. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. I shall lack nothing. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still, the quiet waters. He restores my soul. Just as he did in the confession here in the absolution where he says, all your sins are forgiven. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We now continue with the song response, I am Jesus' little lamb. lesson for this evening uh, taken from uh, John's gospel, John chapter 10, beginning at the first verse. Jesus compares himself to other religious leaders, and he calls himself the good shepherd, and then he calls all false teachers, for instance, like those Pharisees who were trying to lead people away from him, away from their one and only Savior, he calls them thieves and robbers. And really all false teachers are such. And Jesus himself labels them, whereas he continues to take care of us the right way. We read, I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own shape by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Here ends our gospel lesson. We now continue in our sermon hymn for today. The Lord is my shepherd. I'll sh I shall not want.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The text for our meditation on this Good Shepherd Sunday is recorded for us in our epistle lesson, taken from the first letter of the Apostle Peter, the second chapter, beginning at the 19th verse. For it is commendable if a person bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because he is conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and you endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the wood, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have been returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. These are the words of our Lord. In the name of our Savior, dear Christian friends, have you ever been blamed and maybe even then punished for something that somebody else did? Again, have you ever been blamed for and then maybe even punished for something that somebody else did? And what are some of the words that we may have said uh, when we were blamed for somebody else's stuff. We might say, but I didn't do it. Or we might even get sick and tired of it where we say, I always get blamed for what she or he does. And yet this morning, this morning in our text, when you and I get blamed for things, we may complain about it, we may protest, and yet... On this Good Shepherd Sunday, the Apostle Peter reminds us of something very important. He says, our Good Shepherd Jesus suffered for us. Now, the Apostle Peter, as he writes to uh, fellow Christians in this first letter, reminds us all that we may, at times, have to suffer. And sometimes it's going to be unjustly, and sometimes it may be just. For it's commendable if a man bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because he's conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if, if you receive a beating for doing wrong and you endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. Uh, sometimes, as kids, you and I have been punished, disciplined, whatever you, you want to call it, sat in a corner or whatever, for doing wrong. It may have happened at school. It may have happened uh, as we got older as adults. We may have been disciplined at work. We may have written, been written up. We may have whatever it may be. And the Apostle Peter says, well, if you endure what was dished out because you did wrong, you were supposed to go through that. But now he's got the opposite. Uh, what happens if you have to suffer for doing wrong? something good and he says very clearly here it's commendable it's commendable and it's also something that God would say yep that that's something that is pleasing to me that you were able to bear up under that suffering even though it wasn't something that you did now examples in the scriptures for those who may have had to suffer for doing something that was good well, the apostles in the New Testament, how many times were they jailed, beaten, and other things that, they, that happened to them, all because they were only preaching to people about Jesus? Talk about doing good, they're doing the right thing, and they suffered for it greatly. Joseph in the Old Testament, he did the right thing. He said no to committing the sin of adultery, and then he finds himself in the dungeon, in prison, for years after he did the right thing. And 
in our own lives. Have you ever had your head bit off because you were trying to help somebody and they were not, they were not appreciative of you trying to help? Well, there's a form of suffering that we tried to do the right thing and weren't appreciated. But now, there is a theological note we want to make here. And the apostle says, it's commendable uh, before God if you suffer for doing good. And he says, it is to your credit. In fact, you're supposed to be doing good. We're all supposed to be doing good. And yet sometimes we may suffer for it. But there's a theological point that has to be made that when we do suffer, we're not earning brownie points. Uh, to get ourselves into heaven. We are not earning our own way into heaven. We're just doing something that God commends. Why? Well, the fact of who got us into heaven, why we're going to get into heaven, is all said in this phrase, for Christ suffered for you. Christ suffered for you. In fact, in reality, and this is really tipping the gospel on its ear. But think about this. Could Christ say to us, could he point to each and every one of us and say, how come I got cursed for what you did? He could, in reality, but he never did. In fact, as he was cursed for us, as he suffered for us, notice all the things that happened. He suffered greatly, though no sin was in him and no deceit in his mouth. He never told a lie. He never did anything wrong, but he suffered greatly. He suffered unjustly. We just got through the whole Lenten season in Easter, and the whole Lenten season just showed us how unjust all that was. And yet, what happened? He did not retaliate, and he made no threats. They were even insulting him while he was on the cross, insulting him in his bitter sufferings. You know, if that had been you or I, what kind of stuff would have been coming out of our mouths? I think we would have been pretty angry. I think we would have been pretty upset. And yet here Jesus is the Lamb of God. And there's an interesting picture here. I want, you, I want to point this out to you because it doesn't really come out in the NIV translation. Now, why did Jesus, our Savior, suffer for us? He himself bore our sins on the... I'm not going to put tree there, although that can be translated that way. He bore our sins on the wood. That's a much crisper, clearer translation. He bore our sins on the wood. Now, what's P Peter picturing here? He's picturing as if there is an altar with wood on it. And Jesus, as the Lamb of God, is being sacrificed on that altar as the one sacrifice for all, as we mentioned previously a couple of weeks ago. Once for all, once for all. Jesus, the Lamb of God, died for us. So he was sacrificed on the wood and he bore all of our sins, every single one of them. So Peter, in this whole section, he's constantly, through the Holy Spirit, pointing us back, using the imagery, the words of Isaiah 53. He committed no sin, and did, no deceit was found in his mouth. And um, you were like sheep going astray. And all these imageries out of Isaiah. Now, what was our status while Jesus was doing all this, while God was planning all this, while God was foretelling and preparing the world for all this, for Jesus' coming and his sufferings and death, what was our status? And Peter is very clear through the Holy Spirit. He says, for you were like sheep going astray. Or Isaiah 53, each of us had turned to his own way. We did what we wanted to do, not what God asked us or told us to do. But now, as strange sheep, Notice how Jesus willingly suffered for us. In fact, in mercy, God's mercy, you've been returned. You've been returned to the good shepherd and overseer of your souls. We strayed. God brought us back. 
very important. How many times does our Good Shepherd have to keep getting us back? And that's why I prayed in the prayer, um, help protect and guard us from all the dangers around us and also the dangers that we can get ourselves into when we follow the temptations and do things we're not supposed to be doing. So he's watching over our souls. He's overseeing us. And he suffered and died for us, the straying sheep. Really awesome love showed to us by our good shepherd Jesus. And now in the third part, the apostle reminds us, So now as we are sheep in Christ's fold, sins forgiven, healed, healed of every sin, and made holy by Christ, now the apostle says, follow Christ's, follow a good shepherd's footsteps. He says, Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. Have you ever walked on train tracks? I have, most often when I was younger. And could you keep, can you keep your own pace on the train tracks? Is that your own natural uh, walk on the train tracks? I'll bet when, if you do walk on the train tracks, you're not walking on the, the ballast, the gravel, the rocks. I'll bet you you're walking on the wood, right? And they're spaced so much apart by the railroad. So when you're walking on the tracks, you've got to walk on those wooden planks. Now, notice, um, in a kind of a ironic way, the Apostle Peter here puts that um, Christian story about footprints in the sand. He kind of puts that uh, whole story on its ear with this imagery. You can almost use footstep, footprints in the sand and say this way, there's only one set of footprints because we're supposed to be walking in the footprints that Christ made in front of us as our good shepherd leading us and we're supposed to put our feet in that and follow in his footsteps. And the imagery there is that he suffered unjustly. He suffered willingly for the straying sheep. And so, yeah, if that means for us in our lives that we may have to suffer even unjustly for doing good, we follow Christ's footsteps. And the suffering here will always be brief and it will always be temporary. In fact, notice that to this you were called. Peter says, to this you were called. And what were we called to do? To do good. To do good and to follow in righteousness. And sometimes it may mean suffering. But notice, if it's necessary, we're not going to suffer alone. Our good shepherd's going to be with us. He knows exactly what we're going through. And in the meantime, notice... We won't suffer what we should have suffered had God paid us back for everything we've done wrong. We're not going to have to suffer for that. Christ bore our sins in his body on the, on the wood. Almost slipped and said tree. And now, where is Christ continuing to lead us? I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's where he's leading us. To his heavenly kingdom. So yes, you and I may suffer, but on this Good Shepherd Sunday, who really suffered and for us? It was Jesus, our Good Shepherd. And he will continue to lead us until life's end. Let's join our hearts together in prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the great example of love which brought Jesus down to us made him both the good shepherd, but also the lamb who was sacrificed for us and for our sins and for our salvation. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that you did not open your mouth. You did not retaliate, but rather you suffered for us. And as you now continue to watch over our souls, help us to follow in your footsteps, to suffer if necessary, even for doing good. If we have done wrong, help us to receive any punishment or discipline as necessary, while knowing that we stand forgiven and holy and righteous before God because of you. O Holy Spirit, we thank you that you called us into the fold. Live and dwell in us uh, and help us to follow Christ's example and to remember that we were called to do good, even if it may mean brief suffering in our lives. Lord God, for all that our country and many other countries around the world are suffering, give us wisdom and courage Grant that our leaders make right decisions 
And uh, admittedly, no one but you knows where this is all going to lead to. And so we ask you to help us to be good Christians as we follow Christ through it all. We ask this in his holy name. He who lives and reigns with you and the Father and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. We also join together in the prayer our Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We continue uh, with our closing hymn, uh, hymn 51. Welcome to all of you, again, remotely. Glad to have you with us. Uh, God's continued blessings uh, as in this Easter season and as the weather warms up. Hopefully, uh, maybe some other things will be lifted off of us a little sooner than later. And so we can all pray for that too. All right, have a good week. Thanks.